so that when he comes again, you'll be ready. That's, that's the grand picture here. And Luke's gospel is specifically designed, both in its details and its whole design, to bring you to that place of conviction and certainty. And there's, I think, three benefits that we will realize as individuals and as a whole congregation when we have this certainty. First of all, I think it will be a great comfort to you. When you go to work or some other situation and you're the only person who believes Jesus, you will have the steel in your spine to say, yes, Jesus is Lord in every situation. You will have conviction and determination that otherwise you cannot have because you will have certainty about Jesus. That's a great benefit. That when difficulty comes, when health fails, when finances fail, when friends fail, when circumstances go wrong, you will not be tempted to waver in your faith. But that you'll be able to say, no, Jesus' death and resurrection are true, just as they were yesterday, still today. You'll also, I believe, have clarity. How should I live? What should I believe? What should we do in this situation, that situation? How should we apply the scriptures in this context and in this context? What does the Lord require of me today in this situation? It's going to be a very difficult question. But the more you grasp the certainty of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection in Luke's gospel, the better you'll be able to make clear decisions and to have clear beliefs. And that in itself is a very wonderful thing, to give you that confidence and courage. And then finally, and I think this is one that uh, is especially precious, you imagine Theophilus, kind of wonder, had he ever been able to share the gospel with somebody before? You know, when he wrote that letter that I discovered this week to Luke? Poor timid Theophilus, so uncertain in his faith, so unsure about Jesus. Do you think he was very useful in evangelism? Do you think he had, had many good chances to tell people about the Lord and explain the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ? I'd say maybe, but probably not. And one of the best ways that both Theophilus then and you and I now can grow in our ability to explain and share the gospel with others is to have certainty about it ourselves. I think that's probably the main difficulty. It's not actually the awkwardness. It's that we just don't know what to say or how to relate everything together in a way that would make sense to somebody else. And Luke's gospel, I mean, you get this through your heart and through your mind, and you will have a pattern and a template to say, well, here's the deal. I don't have much time to tell you about Jesus, but if you give me two or three minutes, let me tell you this much. God, from the very beginning, ever since mankind fell into sin, promised salvation, and he promised it first to Adam and then to Abraham, who was a, a, a believer in the Lord. And God promised Abraham that he would bring salvation to the whole world through his children. And those children became the nation of Israel, who had kings and prophets, who, who looked forward to the day when God would send the real king to rule his people and conquer his enemies and bring salvation that they never found before. And then Jesus came, and he came specifically to live a righteous life and to die a death that sinners deserve to die so that he could die in our place and live in our place to bring forgiveness of sins. And then God raised him from the dead so that now he sits at the right hand of God as a conquering king still. And he's a good shepherd who goes after lost sheep and brings them home. He's a good Lord. He's like that loving father in Luke's gospel who looks out every day wondering when his lost son will come home. And if only you will repent of your sin and leave your life of rebellion, you are welcome in God's death. I mean, if we get this gospel through our hearts, through our minds, we will be able to tell people maybe in ways we've never been able before, the good news that Jesus Christ has come to seek and to save that which was lost. May the Lord bless it in that.
capacity specifically as we seek to be faithful to him and bring the good news of salvation both to our own congregation 